In the last video, we saw how SPSS can generate percentages in a cross tabulation. This is particularly useful when you are dealing with large numbers or groups of very different sizes, as it allows you to compare groups at a glance. For the analysis using ethnicity and employment as our two variables, we had ethnic group as the rows in the table and employment status as the columns. We asked SPSS to calculate percentages for the rows, so we could see what proportion of each ethnic group was in each employment category. This time, however, we're going to see what the output would look like if we get SPSS to generate percentages for employment categories. To do this, we need to keep our table in the same format, but select a different option from the cells dialog box. So go to the Analyze menu again, Scroll down to Descriptive Statistics and select Cross Tabs. If you haven't closed SPSS since doing the exercise in the last video, press the reset button. Like last time, select Ethnicity from the column on the left and press the arrow button next to the row box. Then select Employment Status and move it to the column box. Click on the Cells button and deselect Observed from the Counts section. This time, instead of selecting the Row option under Percentages, select the Column option. Then press Continue and then OK. Again, the first table gives us the same information. The second table gives us percentages, but this time they convey different information. The usefulness of generating percentages in rows or columns will depend both on how you format your tables, that is, which variable you choose to put in the rows and which variable you choose as the columns, but also exactly what you want to find out. While in the last cross tabs table, the rows added up to 100%, in this one the columns do. We don't find out what percentage of respondents are either in employment, are unemployed, or economically inactive, but we do find out what percentage are white and what proportion are in other ethnic groups. However, if we just wanted this information, there are more simple ways of getting it. So instead of breaking down the ethnic groups by employment category, this table breaks down employment categories by ethnic group. This might sound very similar, but the percentage in the columns aren't nearly as useful to us as the percentages in the rows were. The percentages in the rows told us what proportion of each ethnic group were in which employment category. The analysis took into consideration the different sizes of the ethnic groups and produced percentages for one ethnic group that could be directly compared with the figures for the other ethnic group. This table takes a different approach. It allows you to compare the differently sized employment categories so that these can be compared with each other. But as we were primarily concerned with making comparison between ethnic groups, rather than making comparisons between employment groups, this information, although it's accurate and merely represents another way of looking at the same data, is less immediately useful to us. As you can see, in this case calculating the percentages for rows provides us with more directly useful information on the distribution of ethnic groups between employment statuses. This table is giving us different information that may be useful in one context, but for our question, putting the percentages along rows is much more useful. If you find it difficult to decide on whether to produce percentages in rows or columns, it may be useful to try both. You'll usually find that one of these options is clearly more useful to you in terms of answering your research question. But don't select both options at once, as this makes quite a confusing table. Let's go back now and look at another option. Go to the Analyze menu, scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and select Cross Tabs. Click on the Cells button again. Deselect the Column option in the Percentages section, and instead select the Row option, like last time. But also select Observed under the Counts heading, like we did when we did our first cross tabulation. Then press Continue, and then OK. The table that's produced is a combination of the first two cross tabs we did with these variables. It contains both frequency counts and also percentages going along the rows. Although it is a bit more complicated, 
This type of table can be very useful as it allows you to see both the actual numbers involved and also the percentages that will allow you to interpret any differences at a glance. In the next video, we're going to look at one last option for displaying data in cross tabulations. And then, in subsequent videos, we will start to look at bivariate analysis that includes continuous variables.